Hey, what's going on, Game Weepers? This is Coach Jigs. In today's video, the three most broken champions for each role for patch 1317 that is going to hit the rift very soon indeed. So to prepare yourselves for the next patch, sticking around for the whole video would be a great idea. We're going to give you some champions that are going to be super broken. They will give you the chance to inflate your elo. But at the end of the day, guys, the only thing that is inflating is your elo not your actual skill. To actually improve and to forever improve your elo, what you have to do is to improve as a player. So what we're trying to get at here is improving you, yes, as a player. And we have all the content to do just that on our website at gameweb.com. All you have to do is check out those links down below and get signed up to join thousands of your fellow summoners who froth the daily content our challenger players and coaches upload. We have champion courses, we have champion guides, we have high elo VOD analyses, everything you can think of to improve at the champion you're playing, but also the game itself in terms of the macro and the role, everything. So get signed up. Now let's get into the three most broken for each role. Starting in the top lane, we have Jax. Now for the entirety of season 13, I swear Jax has been here ever since they changed his ultimate. So you get that empowered auto attack every two auto attacks. With a W max, this is super busted still. Jax might have some hard counters for sure, whether it's something like a Poppy, something like a Quinn would do very well. Cannon might be a little bit annoying as well. But to be honest, man, this champion has been so innately busted that he cannot not be on this countdown. He's an S plus two champion in pretty much every single elo. Next patch as well, Shojin might be getting nerfed for Jax in the sense that you're losing actual damage on the item and Jax doesn't really need like any tankiness because of his E so you might not appreciate those changes that much but everything else man is pretty much staying the same. Jax with Divine Sundra, Grass, Lethal Tempo, bro just build anything on him he's still going to be nuts. That's also the same for Rumble as well. Next patch there are no real changes to anything that you actually build so that's great for Rumble and obviously no nurse to the Junkyard Yordle. This means the rumble in the top lane if your team needs a bit of AP, or if you have a lot of engage already with something like a J4 or a Leona, man, rumble is going to be amazing in those team comps. And one of the big reasons why he's become so powerful in the top lane is because of the recent changes they gave him. The fact you're dealing more damage based off of HP, and also the fact that this new build with a demonic embrace rush into Night Harvester, well, it's just been really busted for him, and he's so powerful in the top lane against pretty much every single melee champion, so you can really bully them. So Rumble is number two. Number three is a champion, guys, in 1317. I detailed this yesterday, that it's getting one of the biggest buffs I've seen in recent times. Now, there are rumors out there that this is getting semi-nerfed already. So on the PBE right now, Trindamir's attack range has actually been reverted a little bit. So it got buffed by 50 range from 125 to 175. Apparently, they've dialed that back a little bit to 150. But man, if it is 175, like the patch notes currently suggest, man, this champion, I could even put him number one. I think it's going to be so oppressive in the top lane. Yes, you still have some hard matchups out there, and blind pick and tournament is still a little bit difficult. But bro, this buff is a bit like playing Jax or even like Fiora or Rumble. These champions are so far ahead of everyone else that your counters aren't really counters because they still can't match your power. So Trindamit also has to be here. And Trindamit mains, let me know in the comment section just how excited you are about tower diving, getting in more auto attacks, stacking this or lethal tempo. You will become a ranged champion. Now moving into the jungle, starting us off, we have Belveth. And Belveth is here, guys. Well, there aren't really many jungle changes in terms of like buffing champions, right? Lots of the OPs are getting nerfed. So if we think about Kha'Zix, Kindred, both of these are getting nerfed. Kha'Zix isn't really copying the biggest nerfs in the world. And to be honest, I could have easily put Bug Splat here, but I just wanted to mix it up a little bit. Also, Kane is getting nerfed. So if you're playing Shadow Assassin Kane, you won't be dealing more damage when you're just like eing in terrain and Wing out of it. So I've decided to go with Belveth here. Reason being is because, well, she has very good win rates in every single elo. And in higher elos, if you're going something like Kraken Slayer into Strybreaker. Strybreaker as well, next patch is getting buffed, so you're getting more HP in the item. So this is really good news too, and you can run something like Ghost instead of Flash. It obviously depends on the team you're against, so if you're against a bunch of skill shotters, you know, like Hard CC, Flash is probably better. But if you're against a bunch of ranged champions who like carding you, Ghost is going to be unreal. Pairing this with Strybreaker as well and the slow in this means no one is going to escape you. Also, you have very few counters in the jungle. So Bell vs. number three. Number two, a champion in the jungle who is pretty much uncounterable. This is Nidley. A bit like Rumble in the top lane. If you need an AP jungler, Nidley has got to be the choice here. She is very difficult to play though, so I'd highly recommend guys going onto our website and watching our Nidley guys from expert Nidley players and coaches. They will help you get the most out of this champion because let's be honest, ganking on Nidley is a little bit different to ganking on a champion 
like Maokai. Do you really have to understand the intricacies of this champion and how to play her in terms of micro for the recent buffs to her? Her win rates as well in higher elos in particular, they're off chop still. So nearly number two. Now the number one jungler, despite copying so many nerfs in recent patches, this is a champion who will also appreciate the Shrive Breaker HP going up, this being Rek'Sai. Despite all of these nerfs, man, this champion is still actual insane. I honestly don't even know like how she's kind of escaped all of these nerfs, still boasting like a 53 plus percent win rate in high reloads. Like that really just goes to show how OP this champion is. So with Shrive Break, with Black Cleaver, which they recently buffed as well, right in terms of the attack damage and even the HP. Bro, these two items, even though your early game has been nerfed just a tiny bit, it has not nerfed this champion enough. So Rek'Sai is number one. Now moving into the mid lane here, the third champion, who's one of the best all round mid laners in the game, this being Nico. The recent changes to Nico, where they buffed her right and also changed her pretty much completely, they've made her really good again. Whether it's your extra damage in your kit, especially in your ultimate right, the 120% AP ratio, your laning phase just being generally better, disguising yourself as stuff around the map, it's going to catch a lot of people out. And of course, because of your amazing ultimate, you will be so relevant even if you are behind. There are lots of matchups as well that you do well into, and the setup you have with Rocket Belt, with your jungler and your teammates, it's kind of nutty for those team fights. So Nico is number three. Now number two, a champion who's getting some unnecessary buffs. And I know you Vex mains out there, you're going to be really happy, right? Your champion is getting buffed. But let's be honest, you probably did not need them. Now, Vex, I know if you're blind picking her, can be risky, right? Because there's even champions like Vagar out there. So it can be a little bit annoying blind picking her. But as a counter pick, this champion could be one of the most powerful counter picks because you counter so many champions, whether it's any assassin in the game. They can never really jump into you because of your W. Also, the setup you have, it synergizes Vex with pretty much any jungler in the game. And because you can punish people so quickly with your ultimate, they're also adding that quality of life buff as well to your ultimate. So it now mentions any enemies that are in range of it. And the Q damage going up, and remember, this is on a four second cooldown at level nine, which is kind of correct. That sounds super busted as well. And then your W's cooldown is also going down at rank one by four seconds. These busts are just way too good on a champion who's already way too good, to be honest. But she is number two. Now, number one, probably still going to be the best mid laner in the game next patch, even though there are actually some interesting buffs to a lot of mid laners in 1317. But I still think Talia is going to be number one. The recent buffs to Talia have meant that she is the number one mid laner. In every elo, she performs very well. And because there are no nerfs to this champion, nor her items, she's going to continue to do so in 1317 as well. The roaming potential, the wave clear you have, the setup with your junglers. You also counter a lot of champions in the game, just like Vex, I guess, like champions who like to dive and dash around your E because it will root them. It's a very annoying spell. And because most people aren't going to be thinking about actually counting that cooldown, you will catch so many people out playing those dashy champions. So Talia, number one mid laner for 1317. And moving down to the bot lane here, starting at number three, we have Kaiser. And most of you guys are probably thinking, well, Static Shiver's getting nerfed. And you'd be right. The AP ratio in this is getting nerfed, right? Now, I still don't know if this will be enough. But what I'm really getting at here, guys, is actually playing AD Kaiser with Kraken Slayer and then Novori Quick Blades, also with Lethal Tempo. The stats show that this build, and I've talked about this in our recent videos as well, that this build is actually even just as good as the AP setup at the moment with Static Shiv and Nash's Tooth. So AD Kaiser, believe it or not, is actually a top three AD carry. Her AP with Static Shift gets built way more and is talked about way more, but this one is just as good with AD. So Kraken Slayer into Navori Quick Blades. So Kaiser's number three. Also, the engage meta really helps her. And it also helps the number two AD carry, this being Draven. Now, why is Draven here? Well, just think about it. Whether you're building Trinity Force, which is not getting nerfed for ranged champions, whether you're building Infinity Edge and just going all out crit because you're snowballing super hard at that point, bro, this champion does doesn't really have many things that stop him, but the number one AD carry might have something to do with this, this being Ash. So Draven number two, Ash really does well against him because Draven can never really touch, well, a good Ash player anyway. So that's why Ash kind of beats Draven to the number one spot. The only real champion you might have to worry about as Ash is Ziggs. So if you're really scared, there's like a Ziggs one trick pony on the enemy team, you can think about banning him. But for the most part, bro, Ash is going to be good in any game, really good at laning, very good DPS. And with Kraken Slayer and Trinity Force, like I mentioned for Draven, right? Triforce not getting nerfed. Well done, balance team. Ash is the number one AD carry for another pack. Now, the final role to talk about, of course, is the support role. And guys, if you are enjoying our recent content, please remember to leave a like down below and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss our future season 13 uploads. Number three is a champion who counters a lot of supports right at the moment. So if we think of something like a Rel, a Rakan, an Alistair, this champion who does really well into all of them is Janna. Why? 
because of your tornado. Bro, this ability is the most like underrated ability in the game, to be honest. If you are a good Janna player, using your Q against a Leona, against a Rel, against a Rakan, all you have to watch out for is them using their flash so you don't have time to use your Q. So your spacing is very important, right? Also, the actual win rates in every single ELO prove to us that Janna is easily an S-tier champion at least. I just think you should really be picking her as a counter pick because supports like our number two on this countdown can destroy her, this being Blitzcrank. So if you blind pick Janna, you will run into stuff like Blitzcrank, Thresh, Pike, Hook Champions. You might even run into stuff maybe like a Senna who can just scale for free against you or even more ranged champions like a Lux or Zera support. I know both of them are kind of getting changed for support, but you get my point. But Blitzcrank is number two, guys, really because of the adjustments. What they're going to do, guys, to Blitzcrank, they're pretty much nerfing his jungle, right? And if you were playing lane Blitzcrank as well, but guess what? They're buffing your base HP and your base magic resist here. Also, your passive shield in the early game like early early will be buffed so you will be a lot harder to kill early on and because you do so well against lots of popular supports those enchantresses you're going to be even scarier in 13 17 so the crank is number two i just highly recommend not blind picking blitz crank because there are hard counters out there like the number one support for another patch get me out this being rel guys if you have rel in your champion pool keep playing her she's one of the few blind pick supports i think maybe like rakan is out there as well but rel does well man in any team composition and can find spots against any team composition as well you might have to be a little bit careful about picking rel into stuff maybe like alistair janna of course those disengages, even something like a Tarak who would want you to jump in. So you have to be a little bit careful. But for the most part, man, the stuff in this champion's kit, the CC that's still there, FF, she's number one. So those were the three most broken champions, guys, for each troll for 13-17. Any thoughts, any comments, let me know in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you on our next one. This has been Coach Eats. Peace.